Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is God's Choice Ministries and I want to welcome you back if this is your second time. If this is your first time, I want to say welcome to you. And today my message is the part for me. This is um my Monday's message for today and my chapter is Matthew 7 verse 22, 23 and 24. That's my beginning and my opening part of the message. I'm going to um, be reading those um, verses. And so let me just open up with a prayer right before I, before I begin. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that there is none like you. And Lord, we ask that you, oh God, increase that we may decrease right now, Father. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon this word right now, Father, and speak to to through us father through me oh god let me oh god be cleanse me and forgive me from any sin oh god of unrighteousness oh father that you know that will cause this word not to go forth oh god with power and with might and father god whoever the hearers are who you need to hear this word may it go to them father without delay in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray oh god that you anoint this word for your glory in jesus name i ask amen okay so today i have a message you know that the lord has been laying on my heart lately and it is to part from me. And I had um, a morning prayer this morning and I spoke on Matthew verse 22 and verse 23. And as I was reiterating, um, I just keep here the Lord saying, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done these things? And, you know, when he would say, you know, depart from me because of, you know, their hearts and because of their motives. And so let's just get right into the word. Um, Matthew 7, 22 to 23. And it reads, we're going to start from verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have, have cast out devils. And in thy name done wonder, many wonderful works. And verse 23, and then will I prophesy unto them. Sorry, then would I... And then will I pro profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. May the Lord's words continue to be blessed. And may he add a blessing to his word. And so... Um, these are the three verses he gave me to start off with. And here we can see that he said, Many in that day when he should come back to the earth will say to him, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not done many wonderful works? And the response to them in verse 23 was, And then will I prof pro profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And that was such a profound answer to see that, okay, you know, um, these people were doing the work of the Lord and they thought they were so ready when the Lord came. They came with their, um, with, 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 just like, like, just like a child, when, when they know they have done wrong, or however they know they have done good. So to justify themselves, they would come, once the parent has come, um, arrive home, and they would say, Dad, we did this and we did that. So now they're looking for this um, blessing or they're looking for this favor because of what they did. And so this is just like in, in the days to come when the Lord comes back. He said, many will come to me with their justifications like, okay, I did this and I did that. But he said, I will profess to them, depart from me. And he did not just say, depart from me. He said, he that work iniquity. You know, and I, I believe strongly that these people were doing the work of the Lord. But guess what? Their hearts were not right. Their motives were not right. Sometimes they might have been doing ministry, but God did not call them to these certain ministries. God has not called them to these certain positions. And so here it is. They went ahead and they did these things out of the sync with God, the timing of the Lord. And they were probably ordained by men. 
And so this is why it's so critical today that if God has not called you to a pastor sh um, ship, prophetic, a pro as a prophet or a prophetess, a teacher, an evangelist, and I know that he called all us to evangelize, you know, but some people evangelize to be seen. He may not call you to the world. He may just call you to evangelize in your family, in your coworkers, in those around you. But some people want to stretch out and go to the world just to get on TV to be seen. You know, and so we have to be so careful, you know, when we do these things, we have to um, go before the Lord and say, God, is this what you want for me? Is this what I should be doing? Because if it's not, you will hear Matthew 7 and verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. Either work iniquity. And for a minute, you know, I don't want this video to be too long, but for a minute, let's look at verse 23. He said, I never knew you. If a person comes to me and they say, Ivy, you haven't called me. You haven't even waved to me and say hi. But if I don't know them, how could I call them? If I don't know them, how could I wave to them and say hi? I mean, yes, you would say hi to a stranger, but... If I do not have a relationship with you, um, if you go in public and you see a friend and you know that you had a relationship with them as in a friendship, a co-worker, and you know somehow you met them in church, you met them in the food store and you all had a little conversation even for the few minutes, then the next time you could say, hey, Ivy, how you doing or whatever. There's some communication we had, but some, these persons, you know what they were doing? They were doing the work of the Lord, but they had completely no relationship with Christ. They never spent time with him. They prayed. They probably read their Bibles. But that was only like a, a fashion of form, like they would say. And so, never they had a relationship with him. So God said, Father said, I never knew you. Depart from me. He that work iniquities. That's why he said, you that work iniquity, you did it on your own. You did it. I did not send you. I did not tell you to go and do those things you, you went to do. Because why? You went and I knew that you weren't ready. But guess what? You did it off of pride because so you can be seen and not me. And so this was why sometime, most of the time, people go out of season. God does not call them to go out. God does not call them to go out and... and, and, and and preach these, to these different churches. Because why? They have not been a pro to a process of sanctification. Purification. Healing in their hearts from hurts and past problems and situations. They have not truly been in the presence of God. And really know who God is. And know what he's about. Because guess what? If you know who God is about. Then you should not be coming on online. Um, um, or going in, in, up to a pulpit. And be talking about enemies and all these different things and, and all these worldly goods and, and that is only thing, the only uh, message I hear some people have talking about people can get worldly goods and oh if you pay your tithes you will get this and whatever oh um you know if you do this you'll get that and you do that you you know it's like a gambling thing or manipulating thing do this and you and you'll get that you know like how we would do the children wash the dishes and you'll get ice cream and so, depart from me, he said, you, you worker of iniquity. Because your heart was not right. You did not have a relationship with me. I did not send you out. And this is why, in the end, this will be your word. Depart from me, I never knew you not. So now, this is examination time. Ask the Lord, is this what I am doing of your will? Is, is this what I am doing? Is this ordination that I have received from my pastor, my bishop, my, my um, you know, at my church? Is this of your will? Because guess what? If it's not, then you're walking in error and you're wasting your time. And in the end, because you were so caught up on people and pastors and people who were over you, Telling you what to do and not seeking the Lord to see if, hey, this is this what I should be doing? Is this is this the calling that I should be in? Some people have received pastor's calling 
when the Lord call, it, call them to prophets, when the Lord may call them to evangelize. You know, they just stick to pastor because why? They just want to be in the church. They don't want to go out. It's what they want. And so in the end, I pray that this would not be you. Depart from me. He that work iniquity. I never knew you. Because why? You never sought my face. You never seek me. You never ever came in my presence and say, God, is this what you want? You went after man. You went after the fame of man. You wanted to be seen. You wanted to be glorified. You didn't want God to get the glory. You wanted to be glorified. And so now you have your reward. And that's in a place of damnation forever, eternal. And so that is just the opening part. And I have some scriptures. And so, like I said, it's not going to be long. I just have some scriptures I want to go through to show you some things that God is not pleased with. And that um, we have persons that are doing daily in ministry. And, you know, all of these things God, even, God is even saying to you, do not do it. Do not do it to be seen. Do not do it to be seen. You know, and he continually, continually repeating himself saying, do not do these things to be seen. And so let us go to Matthew 6, 5 to 7. And I just said Matthew. I don't know where it went. Okay, but yes, let us go over to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 5 to 7. Okay, in Matthew 6, 5 to 7 reads, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Fairly I say unto you, they have their reward. Verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. Verse 7. But when he pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. God say, the father said, when you pray, you pray in secret. And when I begin to read this verse, but I say, God, Daniel prayed and, and he prayed at the window and he prayed that they could hear him because they were telling him not to pray. See, that is the difference. Daniel decided that, guess what? I wasn't going to bow to what, what the king wanted. The king was trying to shut me up. He allowed the devil to use him. But he said, guess what? I'm not bowing to the devil. I am going to pray and I'm going to let them hear me pray. So, so at that time, Daniel wasn't praying to be seen. He was praying that they could hear that I will still serve God in spite of. I will still pray to my God in spite of what you are trying to do to me. And so that is a difference. But some people, they pray so they could be heard. So people say, oh yeah, they pray so good. They pray so well. And then like he say, they pray with eloquent words. They pray with all these, oh thou God and this and, you know what I'm saying? God knows your heart. You could say have mercy and God could read the rest of your heart. He, you don't even have to say another word in your prayer. You could just sit still before God and he knows what you are going to say. And so you don't need to go before God with all these different repetitious words like he said. And these are the things that he is warning us and he said, do not do it. But we still are doing it. Because why? We do not have a relationship with Christ, Christ first. And we do not read the word number two. And so... I just want to give you some scriptures to see. Let's go to Matthew, the same chapter, 14 and 15. And for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. See, and this is another thing that God is serious about, forgiveness. We have a lot of people that are doing ministry, but their heart is evil. Because why? God said, forgive and you shall be forgiven. If you have not forgive, if you have not, if you have not forgiven your brothers, you are not forgiven. And so therefore, you need to sit down, put your gift at the altar, like he said. If a brother have an ought against you, 
Go to that brother and reconcile. And if you have an order against the brother, go and reconcile. Then come and speak the word. Then come and pray and prophesy and do all these works. But if your heart is not clean, the father said, who shall stand up in my holy hill? He that had clean hands and a pure heart. So in order to get access to the presence of God, he's telling you. He's telling you what you need to do. Cleanse your heart. Clean your hands. Make sure these hands are clean. Not Make sure this is not doing evil works. Like you're not causing people death and, and witchcraft and all these different other things. Make sure that you are right with him. Forgive. Forgive. Cleanse your heart. Matthew 6, 16 to 18. So we're going right down from 15. We're going to do 16 to 18. I'm showing you some things that God is not pleasing with. That is not pleasing to God. And these are the things I'm sure in the end. God could just look at you and say, depart from me. Because guess what? You cannot just do the work. And not do the heart um, um, transplant. This heart of the voice be right. And so, let's start from, okay, we have Matthew 6 and we're going down now to 16 to 18. Moreover, when he fasts, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. See, see it again? They're looking for men, to please men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou may appear not unto men to fast, but unto the fa thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which see it in secret, shall reward thee openly. Amen. And so this is another thing I see people do. If you are fasting, no one should know that. You should not be telling your brothers and your sisters. You should not be going to work telling your co-workers. You should not be telling your pastor, oh, pastor, I'm on a fast and this and the next thing. The Lord said, no. Do not appear to men and just make yourself feel, oh, like I'm on a fast. Like that's what people do. Like, oh, I'm being punished or whatever. No way. That is not of God. That is not of God. He said it right here. He said, do not appear. But he said, let me, let me read it. From 16, he said, moreover, when he fasts, be not as the hypocrites. You see what he say? You are a hypocrite. Don't be like them. Of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. But verily I say unto you, you have your reward. He said, you have your reward. But when you fast, you fast in secret. That the Father who see it in secret shall reward thee openly. And sometimes people will ask you, oh, you fasting? And you know, I'm just trying to eat healthy. You don't have to tell them anything. I'm just trying to eat healthy. That's all. I decided that I want to eat something light today. You don't have to tell them nothing. That is not none of their business. Because you have to honor what the word of God says. Do not appear to men as you are fasting. That should not even be told to them. So... Let us move on. And this is the last chapter, Matthew 25 and 40 to 46. And in the last part, this is a passion that I have. And I say, Lord, you know, I see the church and, you know, and, and sometimes it is so much need in the world. And, and I say, God, you know, these people on the street, some people... You know, right now in need of food and, you know, where are the feeding ministries? Where are the clothing ministries? You know, where are these ministries? And I know that I am called to it, but in time when the money is provided, and even now, if I could just help someone one here, one there, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sow a seed and I'm going to begin to begin that work. Even now, if I have to give a one bag a month, one bag a week, I'm going to do that. I'm going to help someone, even if I have to be just my family first. So let us go to Matthew 25. 40 to 46 and my topic is depart from me and I'm reading some things that will cause you to miss in the end when the Lord comes back and so Matthew 25 40 to 46 
And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my servants, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me again. We see in another scripture, he's telling them, Depart from me. He cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was in hungered, and he gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me no drink. Verse 43, I was a stranger. And he took me not in, naked, and he clothed me, and he clothed me not, sick, and in prison, and he visited me not. 44, then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? 45, then shall, then shall he answer them, saying, Fairly I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it unto me. He did it, un he did it not to me. And the last verse is 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And as we can see here, this was um, the verses where he was talking about the people who saw him and did not do what, um, did not help him. But the past verses before we got to these verses, starting from 34, that's when the Lord was telling them, you saw me and you gave me water. You saw me naked, you gave me clothes. I was in prison, you visited me. I was sick, you came and you visited me and you came and helped me. And this part was the said who saw but did not do. And so here it is, you know, in my closing. Before you want to go out and speak the word, before you want to go out and prophesy, before you want to go out and be all over the internet, make sure that the person right ne next to you, your co-workers, your family, you're going and reaching out to them. Because in the end, when the Lord said, I was naked, I needed this. I needed that. And you could say, where did I see you? That co-worker who you saw was me. Who needed that money? That family member who was in need, who you passed away. Or who you didn't give a place to stay. That was me. When I was in prison, you knew that I was in prison. A brother, an uncle. And you did not even visit me. Because why? We are made in the image of Christ. And so you must have to... You, you must have love for men first before you can say, I love the Lord with all my heart. You cannot only love the Lord and not love your brother and your sister. He said, you are a liar if you said that. Or if you're doing that, you're a liar. And so my heart's desire today to go over these scriptures, you know, I'll, I'll read them over. Matthew 7. 22, 23, 24 was the first opening. Matthew 6, 5 to 7 was where he's talking about prayer and being seen and prayed to be seen. Matthew 6, 14 to 15 was forgiveness. We talk about cleansing your heart. I mean, where I um, reiterate cleansing your heart. Matthew 6, 16 to 18, where I talk about fasting in secret, not telling people about your fasting and stuff like that. Matthew 25 and 40 to 46, where he showed, where he, um, where he, um, told persons that he said, where did you see me? He asked them, where did you see me? I mean, the people asked, where did we see you? And he told them, you know, if I was sick, if I was hungry, you know, you should have helped me because those people that they saw in their lives who they passed, who they, um, rejected or whoever they passed and did not help. He said, that was me. That was me. And so I pray a blessing over this word. I pray that whoever are the listeners, uh, you know, in the future, whoever would listen to this message that you are here and look at something. You know, it's so much more that I can say with this, um, um, with this topic, depart from me, you know, because 
is so much more to what the Lord wants for us and, and for things that he's told us not to do. Because guess what? He's warning us. He said, these are the things I am not interested in. And somewhere, I think in the Old Testament, it says to where he said, I am not interested in these blue mo these, oh, these new moons, these festivals, these feasts, and all these different things. And so I see a lot of churches, they are so caught up on these bunch of uh, uh, anniversaries and all these different things. Be careful. The Lord is warning you. Yes, these things can happen, but do not put these things before God. Do not put these things before the soul of man. Some Sundays they don't have an altar call, but yet they focusing on the anniversary and the pastoral anniversary and this convention and that convention, you know what I mean? And you never ask one person a day, do not know the Lord to come to that altar. God is going to judge you in the end. When you come and say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, I, I do not know, know you because you did not do what I told, told you to do. The focus should be sold. Everything that we do, let God get the glory and let soul should be first. He said, I wish that none should perish. And so I pray today that the person who's listening, Father, they would get this in their spirit. This would be like a sword to their heart. So God, if you are this person who are just looking and, and going after works, I pray that you would get a true relationship with Christ and that he will begin to speak to you through his spirit. And I pray, God, if someone does not know you right now in this hour, that they would come to know you in the pardon of their sins, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, let your will be done and let your kingdom come in the earth as it is in the heavens right now. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3 and 16. I thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.